so we are back with another recap of The Bachelorette. But before we get into that, we have some breaking news that we want to update on a previous story that we ran about Bachelor in Paradise and the alleged sexual misconduct with regards to Corinne Olympios and Demario Jackson. Now, this has just come out from Vulture.com. Apparently, a crew member on uh, Bachelor in Paradise spoke with the Daily Mail and has given the most complete account of what went down. This is just their account, but I think it's an important addition to the story. And then, Ash, I want to get your reaction. Um, this is basically what happened. Uh, the producers on the show approached Corinne and Demario saying that their storyline, which is, you know, reality TV is fake, their storyline for the reality <laughs> show would be that they would be hooking up with each other. They were two sort of villains on their season, so that would play very well to the audience. Corinne and Demario uh, were getting better acquainted with each other. They were drinking, trying to get to know each other. Then they took it to the pool, and things quickly got um, very sexual. This is what the crew members spoke with to the Daily Mail about. Quote, there was hugging and kissing and touching, but before long, she seemed to go limp and was sliding underwater. DeMario kept trying to hold her up at the same time he appeared to be having intercourse with her. After he finished, which only lasted a few seconds, he lifted her out of the water and laid her on the cement, where he proceeded to have oral sex with her. She appeared to be unconscious. At that point, some of the crew came out and carried her off to her room. She was limp and seemed unable to walk on her own. Now, the crew member was obviously very disturbed by what they saw and that um, the, the production's team to the assault or whatever went down in the pool was very disturbing. Um, and there was no doctor, no paramedic that was called that night. Um, instead, what the decision was was that Corinne would just sort of sleep it off that night. And then the next morning, when they spoke with her about what went down, it appeared that she has uh, she had no recollection of what had transpired. And that, at least, is what this crew member is saying. I think it's an important piece to the puzzle. Again, this is all a developing story. That's just the breaking news that we have right now. I want to make sure that you guys get the complete picture. Um, Asher, you worked at a Rape Crisis Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you sort of, uh, I guess, enlighten us a, a little bit about where, where the lines are? Because this mm -hmm. is going to come into play here. Uh, Corinne's sources have said that she does not blame DeMario, that they were both drunk. DeMario has said something similar to that, that they were both mm -hmm. really drunk at the time. But where does the rule for consent where does that come in? Where is that line? Yeah, it's important for people to know that legally, if you are intoxicated, you cannot give it consent. Mm -hmm. So if someone is sloppy drunk, they no longer can legally give consent. So, um, you know, without kind of knowing any details, just the, the fact alone that she was blackout drunk means that, she, that she's in a situation where she can't give consent, he can't give consent. Mm -hmm. um, but having those chilling details of her apparently passing out that's a that's rape mm -hmm. so, um if if she's unconscious she cannot verbally give consent that's not her decision so um i you just uh from a legal standpoint um and from the definition of rape and sexual assault that this is 100 percent it yeah, um, the, the friend that sent me this article, which I'm very grateful they did just before we went to tape, basically said this probably means that the production is going to be shut down. Mm -hmm. If these allegations are true, um, the, the way that this story is getting out, it seems as though um, Bachelor in Paradise and uh, how they, they've been blurring the lines for consent the in entirety mm -hmm. of the show. The, right. the whole show is people from Bachelor and Bachelorette getting drunk and hooking mm -hmm. up with each other, basically. Um, I think that this is, they crossed a line here, and I think that mm -hmm. Warner Brothers stepped in, um, and it seems in no uncertain terms is like, we are shutting this down and doing a complete investigation. We're still waiting mm -hmm. on the results of that investigation. What, uh, what an important takeaway, you know, for you at home um, is that you always have to intervene. That's 100%. You can't be like, oh, well, maybe she knows what she's doing, maybe whatever. Um, no, if you see someone that's incredibly intoxicated and they look like, you know, they might be going home with someone or they might, you know, be engaging in physical activity that they, if they weren't drunk, they wouldn't want to, mm -hmm. that's sexual assault and you should try to intervene as well. Um, so the fact that the producer, there were cameras rolling, producers saw what happened and no one intervened is disgusting and really disheartening so but yeah so if, if this can be a teachable moment for you know other people who work in reality television um, and just in real life that mm -hmm. you always need to intervene if you see something you have to say something and help out and um, and just know if someone's intoxicated they can't give consent 
Another thing I want to add, too, is that the way that this story is being handled right now, I know that the production team and that uh, Warner Brothers is keeping this very close to the chest, but this story is snowballing and it's getting out of hand, and I think they need to get ahead of it really quickly and make mm -hmm. sure that they um, reclaim the narrative. And that Because right now, there are so many stories coming from all these different sources and from crew members and anonymous tips, and um, when this is, this is, like you said, Asher, potentially a very important teachable moment about consent for America and for The Bachelor in Paradise audience. Um, it's an important lesson and we need to be having this discussion. We need to be doing it in the right way, in the most responsible way. And by all the speculation that's spinning around right now, I'm seeing already a lot of victim blaming. People mm -hmm. are saying that Corinne was a drunken mess on her season, so she probably was, you know, fine with it. And that it just, we, we got to find out what happened here. We need them to get ahead of this because it is spiraling and that's mm -hmm. not fair and that if this isn't handled well, it sets a really uncomfortable precedent um, or it just sets a really uncomfortable tone for other people who have been uh, victims of similar sort of assaults or have been in similar situations as Demario as well. I think mm -hmm. that in general, they are, there needs to be um, a united front where they can come forward and explain exactly what went down because just all the anonymous tips and the anonymous sources, it's making it really easy for people to shame on both sides of things. Exactly, And that's yeah. wrong and that's not how this should be handled. So mm -hmm. Warner Brothers, Bachelor in Paradise, I'm looking at you. You guys gotta, gotta handle on this because this is getting out of control and mm -hmm. it's not okay. That said, <laughs> Asher, we're gonna do a, a full 180 turn Woo! and we're diving into <laughs> uh, the, our recap of The Bachelorette, which I'm very excited to say is back. Um, now, last night, there was not a new episode of The Bachelorette because of a little thing called the NBA Finals. <laughs> um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. But that works out really well for us because we were unable to tape last week, and right. now we're back better than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, Asher, we, we, we had a, a pretty interesting episode, I would there, say. Whole, first question, are bananas a carb? I don't know. I was so, yeah. Oh, that blew my mind. This is anyway. what I liked about this episode. <laughs> I think that we got to see very clearly that Rachel is not here to mess around. Mm -hmm. She is looking for a husband. Demario tried to come back into the house. He tried to win her over, and she said, no, no, yeah. not today, sir. And then uh, Blake E. and the Waboom guy were just focusing on each other. They, mm -hmm. they have some sexual tension. Right, yeah. The fake kind of... Um homoerotic story that Lucas tried to tell. Waboom guy is Lucas. Waboom guy yeah. is Lucas. Um, about Blake standing over him and eating a banana. Mm -hmm. um, that left just a really gross taste in my mouth and I was officially like, all right, waboom joke. I'm officially over it. Like if he's gonna pull this stuff, I'm I'm ready for him to leave. Yeah, and then they both and they both left. And yeah, Rachel, and they both left, Rachel said, great. you know, I think you guys are not and, you know, she said, I don't think that you guys are really here for the right reasons. I'm mm -hmm. not feeling, I'm not getting anything from this. Right. This isn't beneficial to me finding love, so bye bye mm -hmm. And they both got mad at each other. Yeah. And that was kind of fun. I do. Because it, yeah. it was the right kind of mad for this show. I don't like it when they, you know, when it comes to blows and people are punching each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's too far. But what you do like a little bit of cattiness from guys. Right. You know, and they were being, they were being a little sassy they were, to each like, other. They posturing, you know, puffing up yeah. next and to I each other. That, I thought that was kind of funny. I think they're best friends now, though. You know, I think that they're just hanging out Santa Monica or wherever the heck they're from. Probably and, Santa Monica. And um, just yelling, we'll boom at each other. They probably are. I mm -hmm. wish them well but you know they're they're sort of a I would say like a casualty of the season we won't really remember them two years from now but we'll remember them for now and good that we do mm -hmm. um, her one-on-one -on -one date was with a guy named will will yeah will okay. who looks like a like, beautiful man yeah oh my god I goodness. also forgot he was on the show First time, I did not remember yeah. anything about him from the previous episode. Yeah, but he is abrasively handsome. Mm -hmm. And they well, went on a, uh, he's a, he's like an abrasively handsome, like sturdy guy. And I right. feel like I need to like embody that physically, like Will, uh, as I talk about him. Because he's that like, oh, uh, Yeah. Know? They went horseback riding on Rodeo Drive. Yeah, it's like typical Beverly Hills, just riding her horse, shitting all over stores. Also, she said, I didn't know that you could do this. And she's like, you, I didn't know that you could just ride your horse around Rodeo Drive. To which we, who live in LA, were like, I didn't know that either. And also, don't do that. Yeah. What? That, I don't think that's a thing. I, yeah, I think I that know. I feel a like lot there's of some these, health regulations that are 
Yeah, a lot of these dates when they have to stay in LA for the first for the first you know month or so of filming because they can't afford to fly everybody everywhere. Um, so the, for the first month or so of filming, they'll stay in LA and they come up with these dates that I'm like, what? That's a thing, and they just get more and more creative and bizarre. So she just went full cowboy with Will. Mm -hmm. I think that they had some chemistry. I don't think uh, a major amount. That's the thing. Like as as ruggedly handsome as it was, and as like fine as the date was, there's nothing really memorable about them, and I didn't see any kind of chemistry happening at yeah. all other than it being like isn't it fun to ride a horse in a store the chem I, I notice chemistry with uh, people when they start sort of laughing with each other in a way that isn't just first date laughter because you know on a first date you kind of laugh at the person's jokes maybe a little bit more than you would if you yeah. knew them Nervous and so, yeah but I when I see genuine laughter which I saw on her date with Peter um, which I see with her and Dean as well I or and I also see with her and um, the no other other will there's another we're confusing the guys she didn't go on a date with will will is the basketball guy he like mm -hmm. dunked on a mini basket oh that's will oh shoot i don't and then brian wait. is his name brian uh wait we're sorry editors two hours later fred no no fred is other. okay anthony wait. anthony 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 how are we gonna do that she went on a date with Anthony. I don't know who's gonna edit this, and I'm so sorry, but <laughs> see, well, that's also like he's he's just not that mem he's not that memorable. Like but Will and Anthony. Will is adorable. Anthony, very ruggedly handsome, but personality-wise, still not totally. Will had the one-liners. Anthony mm -hmm. was just kind of there on a horse. Yeah. Well, what I was gonna say. That's why I knew that we'd gotten the names mixed up. Is because. I remember that she does have chemistry with Will because they have had organic, la like, from the gut laughter, whereas her and Anthony were just like, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, then we have this group date where they go on Ellen. As you do. As you would, yeah. Which is good for ABC because they need, they need all that publicity mm -hmm. that they can get. Uh, they go on Ellen. They take their shirts off. They do dancing. It's the Bachelorette. The guys are going to kind of do that. Um, and they find, like, some of the guys find out that, uh, Rachel's been kissing other men, and they get really bummed out about it, and then they all just try to make up for lost time and kiss her, which is slightly awkward. Yeah, all the guys get very weird about kissing her. One of them refers to Rachel as his sloppy seconds. Yeah. Who, That's you're hot. competing for her heart! Don't call her your sloppy seconds. Oh, weird. Uh, anyway, uh, Fred is sent home from that date, even though Fred has obviously kind of been in love with her for a while. Yeah. He really was hoping that something could happen, and I think he he seems like such a sweet guy. I wish yeah. him well. He's a big old nerd, though. I think, I think there was a way. He was just a little awkward about it. He was probably very nervous, so... You know, he did, he did come across as a little bit weird. He gets sent home. Sorry, Fred. And who got the rose on that date? I believe it was Alex. Alex gets the group date rose. As I sit in front of you now, I couldn't tell you what that face looks like, but good for Alex. Um, and then she goes on, uh, then she goes on her mud wrestling date, mm -hmm. and, um... Which I've never seen men mud wrestle, so that was nice equality. That was nice. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, I liked the mud wrestling. That I, was... I hated the horrifying, like, extra comments of, like, all the women, like, show us your... Booty! Booty! Yeah, it was very uncomfortable to watch. Ah. And also just really uncomfortable because I was worried someone was going to get a neck injury because the way yeah. they body slammed each other, too much. Also, let's remember that there's Kenny the Pitbull, the pretty Pitbull Smith, or I don't know what his last name is. Um, but Kenny is a wrestler and he did really well, but he actually finished second to a guy who I had never heard of before, Bryce. Bryce, Bryce yeah. Bryce won, but Bryce seems good Good for Bryce. I'm happy for Bryce. And uh, Bryce and Eric are the two people that say that, uh, that, that, oh, so Bryce and Lee tell other people on the date that Eric is not here for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Lee, it has come out. Is racist. Yeah. Which his I Twitter, called it. I called it. <laughs> his, his Twitter isn't great. Yeah. It's actually pretty bad. It's really bad. Yeah. And Not the producers of, yeah. super knew that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that they've found sort of ways to bait him for this to come out. Eric um, realizes that there are some guys... Um, being Bryce and Lee that are saying bad stuff about him and that he's not here for the right reasons. And that is sort of, 
you know, where uh, the the rose ceremony sort of goes. Because we haven't seen who gets a rose. Mm -hmm. That's the new thing. They don't end the yeah. show on the rose ceremony. It's like to be continued. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though Eric is really going to come to blows with Lee and they're going to mm -hmm. have this face off. And um, Lee has to have, I think, uh, the history of racism in America explained to him. Right, like, yeah. That's in the in the next episode. Yeah, it is insinuated that what he's doing is 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 or the name the names racist. that he is calling the words that he's using to describe Eric are have a history in racism. Yeah, and um, th that had to be explained. Explained. Mm -hmm. It had to be explained to Lee. So yeah. I, I look forward to Lee developing. Yeah, I also look forward to him just leaving the show because he seems like a garbage person. Well, this is what I think is going to happen. I think when I say I look forward to Lee developing, I think he's going to blow up and yes. say some awful things and the producers are going to be like, good job, like we did this, we created this. And then uh, he's going to leave in a blaze of glory because if there's something that we learned, which we sort of said at the top of this recap, Rachel takes no shit. And she's not afraid to send people home. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, um, that's definitely what we're going to see. That said, I still think that Peter is my favorite to win. I think they have the best chemistry. I, I like them together. Mm -hmm. I am in favor of them together. Everyone else, I, I'm still having you don't a like hard... Kenny? Do you like Kenny? I like Kenny. like Kenny. I like Kenny too. Um, but I think that... I don't see him with Rachel, but I want, I really want Kenny to find love. I just, right. I really <laughs> want him to find Kenny. love. He seems great. I would love for Kenny to be the bachelor. That actually. would be amazing. Yeah. That would actually he be comes amazing. Across, he's so charming. I think he seems like such a cool guy. He obviously is devoted to his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I love pit bulls. So great Adorable. for him. Right. Um, but as far as chemistry wise, I think I have Rachel and Peter so far. What mm -hmm. about you? I think, yeah, I think I'm there. It's either that or I'm still on team Kenny, but I don't know. I would definitely prefer to see him the next batch. Though. Yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be kind of cool. Uh, guys, we want to hear from you in the comment section below. This has been a jam-packed video, a whole bunch of information. Are you still watching The Bachelorette? Do you enjoy these recaps? Um, let us know your thoughts on The Bachelor in Paradise situation. As stories develop, please feel free to update us because I think that's important that we keep everyone up to date. And if you have any questions about um, sexual assault or anything, you know, domestic violence, anything along those lines, uh, you can check out rain.org. That's spelled uh, R-A-I-N-N.org. Um, and, you know, they have helplines, uh, they have a website with great resources, um, so if you have any questions about that, definitely check them out. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we will see you next time on Pop Talk.